I said a hip hop. The yes. Hip. The hip, 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 hip. Why did that occur to you? Why did you use those words? Because it was new. Just like people in rock say, let's rock. Let's rock and roll. That's what hip hop was. I said hip hop. Yeah. Come on, girls. Again, the floor. Come on. They are rap royalty, the original kings, Wonder Mike, Mike Wright, and Master G, Guy O'Brien, two of the three original members of the Sugar Hill Gang. We met with their team at their studio in Inglewood, New Jersey, to break down their most improbable journey to music immortality, which started with creating a whole new type of record. I always thought the letter B was percussive. And that's why I used it a lot in my raps. A baby bubble, baby bubble to the boogie, the bang bang, the boogie to the beat, beat. And I tried to turn my vo my voice into a vocal percussion. I still, to this day, can't really get a hold of how much of an impact that this music has had on the world. The third original member, Big Bank Hank, Henry Lee Jackson, died in 2014. Hen Dog Henry Williams has also been with them since the beginning. Rapper's Delight first hit the charts in 1979, making it to the Billboard Top 40 and number four on the R&B charts. Today, the Sugar Hill Gang is as busy as ever, performing across the country and around the world. But the story of their coming together is so unlikely. Oh! This is ground zero, literally. It all began at Crispy Crust, a pizza shop in Inglewood, New Jersey. Somebody said that the guy Hank in the pizza parlor rapped. That guy was Big Bank Hank, living in the Bronx but working here in Inglewood and rapping while he made pizza. He was discovered by Sylvia Robinson, singer turned producer and founder of Sugar Hill Records, on a mission to make the first rap record. The story goes that in August of 79, she had him audition in her car, in his apron, she knew right there on the spot he could pull it off. Word got out and she also auditioned Master G and Wonder Mike, both young up and coming rappers in Inglewood. Yo, they wanna hear you rap. So now in my mind, I'm tripping cause I'm like, oh snap, that's Sylvia. Uh, what do you know about Sylvia? I know that she's the big time recording artist. She's got the studio. So the Sugar Hill Gang was formed with three guys who just met. They laid down the 15 minute version of Rapper's Delight in just one take. But there were some hitches. The music track had been sampled directly from the song Good Times by Sheik, and Hank was using rhymes written by Grandmaster Kaz, an artist he actually managed. With the meteoric success of Rapper's Delight, Sheik co-founder Nile Rodgers threatened to sue and was eventually credited as a writer and paid royalties. Grandmaster Kaz took no action and never got credit or royalties. At its peak, Rapper's Delight was selling 50,000 records a day. To listen to the lyrics is to hear hip-hop taking its first steps into the mainstream. Wonder Mike's approach was to make a song for everyone. What you hear is not a test. I got that from The Outer Limits. What the is it? TV I'm show. rapping yeah. to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are going to try to move your feet. Wow, okay, that explains it. Well, who are you? I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. To who? I didn't want, want to isolate anyone. I included the world. I, the purple, I wish I had thought of something else. And to yellow. the black, to the white, the red, and the brown. Purple and yellow. Uh, but first, I got it. Uh, bang, bang. So the record hits. Yes. Yeah. What did you see? What did you hear? What was the reaction? Woo! Now, that was crazy. So I go back to high school. Every single store, every single car, car. everywhere I went, I could keep, and it would start crazy. one place to start again. I was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be a little bit more than what I thought. Master G was just 17 at the time. Wonder Mike, 22. What's it like to be famous for something you did when you were 17 and 22? I mean, that still remains the high point <laughs> right. of your lives and anybody's life if they did such a thing. What's that like? You don't live off the reality of that. You live off the real reality of what you do from one day to the next. I'll always be known for that music, that song, but at the end of the day, there's still much more life to live. So, you know, you gotta put things in perspective.